Alô, alô, alô. I think this, this whole thing with traveling started when I was very, very young. My mother's from France, my father's Danish. But since she's from France, we always traveled you know, to France, driving around by car. And it was natural for my family to travel all over Europe when I was very young. Then I made my first trip to New York in 89, I think when I was like 15 with my brother and my mother. And since that, I started just going everywhere by myself. The kind of good side effect of the street work being illegal is that because it's illegal, it doesn't have to pass through any kind of like bureaucratic qualitative measurements. I started making documentaries, I think in 2002. I went from photography to making TV programs and uh, I didn't really feel satisfied, I guess, making TV programs. I wanted to do my own thing. So it, it was kind of natural for me in 2002 to start my own company, just making documentary films on my own. My motivation for doing the films that I am is has always been my actually my own curiosity. I find something or people tell me about something and then I get into it and I get more and more curious and then I just need to go there and, and make a film about it. That's really what it is. Hello! Free education is not without toil and strife. It is one of mystery and blunders out and about between the dark and light. Seemingly, that mystical duality of Horus and Seth is not of irrelevance even now. Horus time, sun rises up and the rush of intellectuals closes in when traveling through my mind. And that's where my pilgrimage starts. For you see, I've been told that school is a holy place and that's where wisdom resides. Sometimes I have an idea, but I have no I have no plan, I have no strategy, I don't have a manuscript. I'm always very open and also the way I work is usually that I don't do... For example, I don't go to another place and make a lot of research, go home, think about it and then come back and do my filming. I go there and while I'm researching, I'm filming. So usually I will start filming from the first day I arrive. If it's possible, it's, in most cases, it is. My name Wagner Domingues Costa, 33 years six children, vulgo Mr. Catra, the fiel. Vem Ana Paula, vem Aline e Yasmine, Jaqueline, vem Andrea, vem Aleia, Josefina, vem todo mundo! In 2002, when I first went to Brazil, to start this film about Mr. Catra, I, there was nothing about Baile Funk on the internet at that time. There was, I found one article from, uh, from a, a newspaper in Rio de Janeiro, it was in Portuguese, but that was it. I had heard two songs from a TV program, actually a Swedish TV program, and that's when I fell in love with the Baile Funk music. And I, I was so curious about this music because it sounded like something I had never heard before. I started in Sao Paulo. I met some rap groups and uh, one guy knew Mr. Catra. And so this guy from, uh, from a very hardcore favela in Sonasul in Sao Paulo, he called Mr. Catra for me. And that was 
you know, that was my only contact in Rio. And I just took the plane and I went to, to Rio and Kata's friend picked me up in the airport. And Kata's friend straight took me to this samba party. It was a birthday, private birthday for some of Kata's friends. And Kata came two hours later and we hung out at the party. Of course, at the time, Kata didn't speak any English. I couldn't speak a word of Portuguese, but still we were having fun and dancing and, you know, communicating like, like people do. Kata. What? And he could feel that I, I loved and appreciated, you know, his culture and his music. So that's why he totally trusted me and he took me to the favelas. I met, you know, all the drug lords and, you know, we had a great time. And at the same time, you know, he let me film all these things and it was, it was very good. We became friends. J'ai pas un atelier quoi, j'ai un, un, un peu un, un espèce d'atelier mais il est vide en fait. Il est vide parce que là, 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 là où je travaille c'est dans la ville quoi. J'ai toujours été très fasciné par la graffiti culture. Aujourd'hui vous pouvez dire street art culture around the world. Back in the 80s j'ai vu le film maintenant classique documentary film called Style Wars de New York sur the, about the the subway graffiti in the 80s and and that film has been an inspiration for me f always and uh, at least many years later I felt it was time that uh, was another like documentary about this movement because it had developed so much since 82 when Star Wars came out and and it had spread to the whole world and many different uh, many different styles, many different genres of it all over the world. I mean, I'm, I'm having that thing where sometimes I want the protection of the confinement because you can be really careful and make really delicate things. But anything that's like, anything that gives you security is gonna constrict you at some point, you know? I have no, how to say, marketing plan of my film, you know, now, I'm I don't even have a production plan, you know. And it's easy because I do most of the things myself and of course I work with my editor. But basically I can plan everything about uh, around his schedule and, and then it usually fits into place. And I don't even, you know, I don't even have a career. You know, some people, they, they talk about, oh, now you have to do this because it would be good for your career and you have to go this direction. But I don't know what that means, you know. I don't care about all those things. Hello? Hello? Okay, uh, mini flavor boy. Kutoka, kutoka ogopa, eh? Ngome wangu inacheza kwa ma radio station mingi, eh? I like to, to have like a, a personal story that can tell something about a broader movement or about uh, something going on in society, but tell it through a, a, a personal story, a, a main character. I think it's easier for the for the viewer, for the audience to to connect to to the film and understand the situation if they have somebody to relate to like that. I see that some people they they can see that it's about uh, about freedom and, and doing things that you, you want to do and expressing yourself and expressing your art without maybe having a lot of possibilities and I think it's it's it comes from what I come from. They think that the U.S. jurisdiction stretches around the world. It's illegal according to U.S. law, but it's not illegal according to Swedish law. Go, 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 fuck yourself. And the U.S. really appreciated that we talk back to them, tell them that you don't decide over the internet. We, the users, do. Damn it. I think in all my films you can see, you know, what side I'm on or what I like, you know? But I always try to, to tell both sides of the story. 
like with good copy, bad copy, you know, I have the, the interview with Dan Glickman, the, the director of MPAA, the Motion Picture Association of America, and I let him speak, you know, and then I have the other guys who are enjoying this and, and who are educating themselves and getting knowledge and spreading knowledge all over the world. In a theoretical world, if I could clear every sample on there, and I had a million dollars or a billion dollars or whatever to do it, it would still take me probably, you know, 50 years to go through, you know, the legal hassle figuring all of that out. And that's just absurd. Most of the time, it's not always you can see what side I'm on or what I, what I like. Dance has started in the ghetto. Mono Man was very, very tough to film. It was quite a shock for me to 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 experience the culture on such a close uh, distance. And um, the first, like the first week that I was there, it was like a nightmare. Because for me as an outsider, it seems so violent and so aggressive and so homophobic and so degrading of women. But after the first week, you know, I started to understand and I got more perspectives on it and I met more people and heard their ideas and opinions. And I started to understand and then I gradually, I, I was at peace with what was going on and I understood why they were doing it. And I could see that it was their way of having fun, you know, it was like a game they were playing. And it was not meant seriously, it was not aggressive. It was like kids playing. But every girl afraid of Shelly Belly, you know. Me I tell them, say me I stop them too hard. You see, every girl. But I answer every girl. Sexually, they are very shy. <laughs> and, and you wouldn't think so when you see the film Mano Man and, and you see the way they dance. But you have to understand that there's a barrier because they're doing with their clothes on. But if you talk with them about sex, they get totally shy, you know? And you don't see people holding hands, hugging when friends meet, no. That's too private for Jamaican people. But you can dance like you are having sex with your clothes on, that's okay. <laughs> so it's very strange, but also very interesting. <laughs> Country's cultural warriors are, are even more important than a country's political warriors. And, and I like to think of myself as a cultural warrior. I think that telling stories, I think that in some ways reminding people of, of just what it means to be human. It's about the mentality, you know. If, if, you, if you keep telling a people that, oh, you can't do anything, you're nothing, you're poor, you don't have opportunities, you are a victim, here's some food, we'll give you food all day and every year. You know, they become that. But that's not how Africa is, you know. They're strong and they have a will and they have great things going on, great art, and they have a lot of opportunities. Africa is, is the future. I met a guy in the street and uh, he invited me to stay at his house in the, in the ghetto in Luanda, in Nigeria. I was like, okay, sure, great. And I, I stayed with him and the next day he introduced me to these guys. And it was, it was so crazy, they were just doing all this and I, I, had, I did not tell them anything about what I wanted or anything. They just showed me, this is how we live, this is our art, this is how we do it. And I was very, I had a lot of respect for them because you see that they are in a very poor area. They are in a really tough ghetto 
but you, if you look at their clothes, it's so fashionable. They have so much style. And the dance move, there was amazing. They can dance and even without music. Buna poza liwa mwana mume unaweza ukaishi popo Mwana mume maisha popo Dunia ni popote Maisha popote Yeshima Yeshima oh Haya yeshima ni kitu chabule jamani Yeshima wana yuzi I feel when I'm doing what I'm doing I feel that I'm not working I just even if I could make a living from it, I would still do it and then I would just have some crappy job on the side to get some money. Ulaya itabaki kuwa ulaya, Tanzania itabaki kuwa Tanzania, tupendane, tueshimiane. Ererere, eee, nivo tukagamu, all right. Thank mm -hmm. you.